Hello everybody, Dragana here from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really quick project for you. I want to show you how I make these envelope pouches. This is a really simple project and perhaps you already know how to do it. In case you don't, I will just go through it quickly. They are great for storing ephemera as an extra piece in your journal for happy mail and things like that. Uh, I really like these. They are lined with fabric. I'll just quickly show you. And they can fit quite a lot. You can make them smaller, you can make them larger, whatever uh, you need uh, them for. I like to have them at least, like I use four sheets of A4 paper, like this. It's actually a little bit smaller. This is printable, so I cut off the white edge around, so it's a little bit smaller. I'll just give you a size approximately. It's eight inches by eleven and a quarter. But like I said, you can make them any size you want, depending on the paper that you have. And uh, usually, it's you know you can't really do it with a square paper. You could, but it will end up being uh, like a skinny one. But you can go half and make a smaller one. It's up to you, really. But I'll show you today how to make it with the A4 size full letter paper. And um, let's put this aside. And obviously, for this, you will need to use sewing machine. Or I suppose you can do it by hand if you can be bothered. I can't. I just like to do it with a sewing machine. And uh, you can also decorate them with stamps. If you have already decorative papers that have a lot of detail, you don't have to. But I'm using quite like um, uh, simple papers. I mean, not simple, but no images there, just the background. So I like to add some stamping. And uh, I'm doing a nature, grungy nature theme journal. So this, these are perfect for that. All right. I'll put these aside. So you obviously need your paper. Just choose the paper that you want to use. And decide what you want to have at the top. For example, I want to have this at the top. The flap. I would just round the corner there. Okay. And I like to ink the edges around. Uh, so you ink with whatever color you have that's going to look good with your print. I'm going to use just black. And I like to use just a dried up ink pad. You know, the one that's kind of not really too um, saturated with ink. You know, once it dries out can't really use it for stamping, but they are ideal for this sort of work. There we go. And it's quick to go to this side. Alright, so that's that done. Now you have to pick the fabric. You can use any fabric that you have. I like to use lighter fabric, like cottons and something like that. Not too thick or not upholstery fabrics wouldn't really work for this so just a plain cotton is fine like old bed sheets or tea stained coffee stained fabrics um, you know like shirts old shirts things like that they will look good as well like if, you, if they have nice pattern as well i'm going to use just a plain white now but you can use any fabric that you like Oh, I already have a fold here, so that's good. I like to have uh, this fabric slightly bigger than uh, my uh, paper. So as you can see, it is about a quarter of an inch on each side. Um, I don't really measure, I just do it by hand. And I like to have a little bit extra on this end. Oh, hang on, this fabric is kind of like... So I'll put this here like that. I hope you can see how much I'm leaving. Like, you can leave more if you want, but certainly don't leave less. Okay, and I like to have at least one inch here. So I'll just mark like that. And I really like this torn edge, so I'm just going to do this. I don't use uh, 
we use scissors just tear it up like that because I like this soft edge and then I just pull a few top threads to have a bit of this like that okay see how it's kind of soft probably maybe do a couple more That is it. I don't know if this fabric has the wrong and right side, but this is the fluffy side, so maybe that's the wrong side. And I want that to be facing the back of this. Just check. All right. So the rounded edges go on this side, and the extra bit goes on over there. So let's just glue this down. I just use plain glue stick. Any glue stick will do. This is just to hold it in place while you're sewing. Um, I suppose you can do it all with glue, but I don't know how strong would that be. You know, I trust my sewing machine more than I trust the glue. <laughs> Any glue. All right, so now I place this. My fabric is a little bit smooth a little bit. So I'm just going to pull it here. Okay, like that. And then you just straighten it out. Like that. That's good. Done. Get a glue stick again and just put some glue here and then you turn that and just... okay so I like to finish this edge on the sewing machine you can do it just like that do a zigzag or straight stitch now or you can add some uh, lace if you want I have this um, olive green lace and I'd like to have it there okay so I'll just put a little bit of glue here like that and I'm going to put it there okay and obviously this needs to dry before I take it to my sewing machine so what I do, I just do either zigzag or a straight stitch on top of this lace to hold everything together. Let's just wait till it dries a little bit. I'll just do a straight stitch, just somewhere in the middle here. used white thread at the back but that's going to be on the inside and I don't really mind so I've been using this brown the whole time okay so now we fold this just hold it gently like that and, and see where you want and how big you want the flap if you want it like that perhaps but I like to go over a little bit so maybe like so and then you just gently press let's just see what that's given us about five five inches and still eight and i just want to make sure that this is the same here and here so we have five and five i think just a tiny bit more on this side okay so now before i put it to the sewing machine finally i do this i don't do a really kind of 
I don't like to crease it really well, just softly like that. Now I want to decorate it with some uh, stamps and um, I'll just grab a piece of paper. Like that. To put underneath and my stamp, I have this leaf stamp that I like and some black ink. And I want to put a stamp of leaf there. So I suppose I can open it up, but I just do it like this. And I just gently press and hold for a few seconds, letting the ink kind of go into the paper. That looks good, I think. Okay, and I want to have a little piece here. I'll just ink the top bit. I'll actually open this up. turn out better than this and oh, that's all right okay i'll let it dry and then i want to have some at the back like here okay. like that i will Close this. Okay. Just drop and hold the counter ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'll slip that one turn out all right. Let's have this. We want some here. This was just the top bit. Great. Now we're done with stamping. Just want to keep it a similar look. using these steps. All right, so now we've done that, we can now proceed to closing this end. And we don't need to sew around the bottom because that's already sealed. And, you know, I don't do just day or day. I want to do just one stitch all around and I'm done. So basically you do a stitch here and then you do one around here. It's quite simple simple as that but you're not going to feed it through your sewing machine this way it's best if you do it this way because you use the paper as your guide and there are several options here you can do a zigzag stitch like this where the needle goes here next to the i'll just show you with this it goes right there in the fabric and then it goes into the paper and it's basically wrapping the paper around so that's that then you can do a straight stitch and just go close to the edge you can go further or closer whatever you can also do a, a smaller zigzag stitch but not all the way to the edge but just like this but this will give you a, a smaller 
envelope. But I still, I like this one. Yeah, I kind of like that one. Okay, what else? Yeah, the rest is the same. So what should we do? We'll just do, um, maybe we'll just do a straight stitch this time. And um, we can experiment with different stitches. Uh, if you have a sewing machine and see what gives you the best results. Okay, let me just set up my sewing machine. Okay, so I start here and I finish there. All right, I'm attempting this again, as you can see the holes here. Uh, the first time I tried um, doing this, uh, my thread just broke. <laughs> what happened something got stuck somewhere so I'm just doing it again okay and I'm going to go uh, back stitch when I come to the corners I just walk my needle I don't really go really fast I just walk it over until I get that edge And where there's the, the fold, uh, it might be a bit more difficult for the sewing machine to go over it if you use just a regular sewing machine like I'm doing now. And in that case, you have to hold this back and push this a little bit to help it, but just go slowly. See here, I wasn't really pulling or pushing, and then the, the stitches got closer together because it was a, a thick area. Well, here I helped it a little bit, and then it, I got better looking stitches. I don't normally use this sewing machine, but the one that I'm using it's actually stationary, it's I can't really move it, and uh, this one is just for filming. Now we have a little bit of a knot here, oh, that's all right. Sometimes it happens, you just cut it off. And with the end bits, you can also use the lighter just to secure them. Just make sure you don't start a fire. <laughs> all right, so it's done. It's kind of really cute. I think I like it. Okay, so now for the front bit, if you take a, a ruler, we find the middle, which is four inches, and you just decide where you want to have the eyelet. Okay, where, is, where are my tools? I'm just going to attempt to make a hole with this. Worked. and I'm just going to put the island and set it yep, that's good. All right now let's get the ribbon now the the length of the ribbon you know it depends on how big your envelope is. I like to have it wrapped up twice, for example, like this. I leave one end and then I do twice and I want to meet here and have enough 
to make a little bow, okay? And then I just take one end and pull it through. Now for the next part, I like to use just a crochet needle. This is 0 0.75 millimeters, which is a really fine one, but it has this little hook, which helps me pull this through the beads. Because I want to add these beads at the end, like, like I have here. Okay, so what I do, I take a smaller one first, like that, and I'll just pull it. Then I take a larger one, and I just pull it, and another small one. Okay, and I'll make a knot here. And I just tidy up this end and I use liner. Just to stop it from fraying. And I pull this down. And here we go. So let's do the same on the other side. Take a smaller. Okay, so that is it. How quick was that? And you can make a lot of these, you know, have them ready for your journal. So you just make them as as you need to, and they're quite easy to do. And I really like them. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had fun and you learned something. And I hope I see you in my next video soon. Bye for now.